on the clock, not rallying, not uh, demonstrating, not lobbying, not politicking, but doing what we just did, worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. We need her there at night because at 9 o'clock at night, they won't let us have amplification. There's a rule, I guess Mr. Obama don't want loud music at night at his house, on his lawn. So we have to turn the PA systems off at 9 o'clock and can't turn them back on until 9 o'clock the next day. But we're going to be worshiping all night. And I have a feeling that there will be some young ladies like her and young men that don't need too much amplification that will be coming out loud and clear. If you can go to Washington, D.C., it will be for 40 days on the backyard of the White House. It will be on the oval-shaped ellipse. It's the oval altar for the oval office. The oval altar for the oval office. And if you can go, you're welcome to be there. If you can't go, I have coined a new phrase. Boots on the ground or prayer in the air. I'll have boots on the ground. I'll be there for about a week, and then I'll have to come back home. We'll be worshiping in that tent around the clock, 24 hours a day, with boots on the ground. And then some of us will have to come home, and we'll still be prayer in the air. Now, if you would like, you can see me. I'm not passing out cards, but if you'd like to get the phone number and the access code for that tent that you could call when I'm there and say, I'm a prayer in the air for your boots on the ground. You see me after church, and I'll give you the phone number and the access code that you can call. By the way, that number's good every day. Uh, seven days a week at 5 o'clock. That's when we pray from here and around the world. But uh, we will be worshiping the Lord Jesus Christ. Not going to be preaching, not going to be teaching, not going to be talking politics. We're just going to praise Almighty God. Amen. No God like Jehovah, we sang a while ago. Going to be no God like Jehovah. We're going to worship no God like Jehovah. We're not going to worship Allah from there. We're not going to worship Buddha. We're going to worship Jehovah God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we're going to do it for 40 days. 24 hours a day, round the clock, at David's Tent. Go to the website, David's Tent DC, and check it out. Send them an email and say, I'll be praying in the air. What a blessing you could give those people and me and others that will be there. And you could send them an email. There's an email address there. You send them an email and say, I can't be boots on the ground, but I can be prayer in the air. Yeah. Some of you on television need to do that. Some of you on the radio need to send them an email and say, I can't be there boots on the ground, but I can be there prayer in the air. God gave me that idea. After I'd been thinking about a friend of mine who used to always say, when he would leave, he'll say, I'll see you there or in the air. And I picked up on that and said, we'll have boots on the ground or prayer in the air. I'm going to do both. I hope you'll do one or both. The other day, Dennis, pastor from Saran, called me and said, I got good news and I got bad news. The good news is we're still coming on Sunday. And I said, Phew. <laughs> I'm glad that good news. Now, I was afraid to ask for the bad news. <laughs> and I didn't ask, but he told me anyway. The bad news is, he said, our pastor that we had scheduled to come is not going to be able to be there. Now, see, I get to not preach on Sunday night, on third Sunday night, because Sarong brings her own preacher. And I get to enjoy it. One thing I enjoy almost as much as preaching is listening to preaching. So I said, well, that's bad news, but we'll make it. 
Good news is you're coming. Praise God you're here. Let's give Sarong a hand. Amen. And I said, in fact, the matter is, I think I can find a preacher so I don't have to work. After all, everybody knows preachers only work two or three days a week, and so I'm sort of lazy, and I didn't want to work tonight. And I said, I'll find another preacher and another preacher who teaches here at 930 every Sunday morning, the Sunday school class, and other times, yeah. said, how about me? And I said, how about you? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for providing our preacher for the night. Brother Will Ruffin, would you make your way to the platform? I'm going to do two things. I'm going to have prayer for him and with him. And then I'm going to go sit down. And I'm going to do what you're doing. I'm going to listen, not to him, but to God. God's going to talk through him. He's God's mouthpiece. He's God's instrument. And I'll tell you why I know that, because the Bible says God's anointed, and I'm going to anoint him, and I'm going to pray for him, and he will be God's mouthpiece. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to anoint my brother with the presence and power of the Holy Ghost, and I pray that you will preach to me and to each person within the sound of our voice the message that you want us to hear. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Brother, amen. God bless you. This is the day the Lord has made. Yes. Rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I rejoice in it. You know, I get elated every chance I get to stand here. And, but I'm, I'm sort of old-fashioned like the pastor. I'm not going to stand behind this pulpit unless I got on a tie. Huh? <laughs> you know, the Bible teaches us that the word of God is as a two-edged sword. It cuts asunder. The word of God teaches me that sometimes people need to be preached to. That's one side of the sword. The other side of the sword people need to be preached at. Tonight, you guys can take it easy. Put on your seat belts. You don't have to slide under the seats. God is not talking about you tonight. You're on the good side of the sword. But that other side that's going to cut is the people that God has stood me here to preach at. Not preach to, but to preach at. The Bible teaches us to one, much is given, much is required. If God gives you so much, give you so much authority, so much this or so much that, he requires that you do a lot to it. Tonight the Lord has led me to teach about unfaithful shepherds. So that's not you. The pastor's a shepherd. Unfaithful pastors. See, I had a good teacher. I listened to the pastor a lot. And the pastor tells me, in word, I must do what God say. I must obey God rather than man. Now, the man in me wanted to teach Revelation 1. But God said, Ezekiel 34. So if you have a Bible, open your Bibles, if you will, to Ezekiel 34. I want to pray for those who get their feelings hurt today. For those pastors that's going to get their feelings hurt today. Because if they do, they should be thankful that they had the Spirit of God. Because if they didn't, they wouldn't feel guilty. But God got some choice words to say to them in Ezekiel. First, I must pray for myself. Father, I do lift myself up to you. Hide me behind the cross, Lord. I pray for each individual here, those that's within the sound of my voice, Lord. I pray that your word will go forth and accomplish that which you sent it out to do. I don't care if somebody gets angry at me, Lord, about what, they, what you say to them. It's not me that they need to have a conversation with. It's you, Lord. Lord, I pray you would bless those that's listening. 
Open their ears, eyes, and hearts to the revelation of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Also, Lord, bless those less fortunate than we are. All these things I pray for in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. I feel like Ezekiel right now. Because like I say, I wanted to teach on revelation. But Ezekiel says, in Ezekiel 34, verse 1, And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy or preach against the shepherds of Israel. Now, this is Israel to you. This United States of America is Israel to each and every one of us. This is a Christian nation. This is Israel to each and every one of us. And God is telling me to preach against a lot of these pastors in the United States. Not because I want to. But God says prophesy against those shepherds in Israel and say unto them, this ain't what we'll say, thus says the Lord God. Thus says the Lord God. Unto the shepherds, woe be unto the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. They sit around and read the Bible, and they know what God say. But God, pastor just got through saying, be ye doers of the word, not just hearers only. They feed themselves. God says you don't go out into the gaps. You, go, you don't go out into the places where people are separated away from me. That's where you need to go. They do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? And what does Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, say? My sheep hear my voice. Hear my voice. But he has appointed under shepherds. Because the Bible says, how will they learn, Lord, if they have no teacher? God says, you eat the fat. You eat all of God's word. And you get comfortable when you close yourself with wool. You get comfortable. Oh, pastor, some people might turn their computers off. <laughs> Some of these pastors listening over the internet might get mad when they feel convicted. But God has already said what he had to say to them, even when they turn the computer off. You eat the fat and close yourself with wool, and you kill them that are fed. And most of us that have not been introduced to Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, when you're in a mess, you call out to somebody. You know there is a God, so you are fed. You are fed. But you have some pastors that don't do pastoring jobs and they make people not even want to go seek God. So they kill your spirit. The diseased you have not strengthened. Neither have you healed that which was sick. Neither have you bound up that which was broken. Neither have you brought again that which was driven away. And most people are driven away from God by people of God. Now, I'm going to explain that to you. I'm going to really have to explain that to you. Most people are driven away from God by people of God. Because the Bible says we shouldn't think more of ourselves than what we are. And because we saved and we don't slip and fall, when our brothers slip and fall, we fail to forgive them. So we drive them away. Now, the Bible does not tell you not to practice tough love. But it tells you there's all kind of loves and we're to practice tough love. Neither have you sought that which was lost. Oh, there's many of us that's lost. There's many of us that's lost. There's many in our own very families that's lost. 
that's lost. You know how you show your trust in God? Preach to your brother. Preach to your sister. Find out which way they go. But, and the Bible tells you in, in the last days, houses are going to be divided. So your brother or your sister may stop talking to you when you speak Jesus Christ. Yes. But expect that. Right. Expect that. Your job is to preach it. Preach it. Seek those that are lost. But with force and cruelty, you have ruled them, and they are scattered because there is no Jesus. They are scattered because you have not told them about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is no shepherd. Oh, we know about Jesus Christ. Have you told anybody else? Have you told anybody else? And they have become meat to all the beasts of the field. And they were scattered. Get confused about, do I want to go over here? Do I want to follow this? Do I want to follow that religion? Do I want to do what this man say? Do I want to do what that man say? Other than focusing on God. Because you have not guided them. Many pastors have not guided them. There are a lot of churches. A lot of churches. Much bigger than this one. Got 10,000, 20,000 members. Most of them don't teach the whole word of God. Because if they taught the whole word of God, a lot of them pews would be empty. Most of them are what the Bible calls ear ticklers. They preach what they sound like politicians. You know, when Obama go to Michigan, he say what everybody in Michigan want to hear. Then when he go to Indiana, he say what everybody in Indiana want to hear. And none of them are the same. When you don't preach the whole word of God, you're not living the word of God. You're preaching self. You're preaching self. How is a church going to say, this is a member of my church? But go stay at Wiley World. But be here on Sunday and put your money in an offering plate. But go stay at Wiley World. How is the church going to do that? Bible says you will always have the poor. Yes. And take care of those, especially the household of God. Right. The Bible tells you that if they're a member of the household, your household, you're supposed to take care of them. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was at Mary's house. And she was anointing his feet with oil. And Judas Iscariot said, Lord, what you doing that for? Don't you know we could sell it all and give the money to the poor? <laughs> Jesus said, leave alone. You don't know what she's doing. You're going to always have the poor. You will always have time to do something for the poor. But she's anointing my body for the burial. Because if you remember in scripture on the third day, when them ladies come down there to anoint my body with spices and oil, I'm not going to be there. I'm not going to be there. Ezekiel 34, verse 6. God says, my sheep wandered through all the mountains and upon every hill. Yea, my flock was scattered upon all the face of the earth, and none, none did search for them. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ said, this is true religion, that you visit the sick, visit the homeless, the motherless, the fatherless. Right. Seek after them. The Bi That's why the Bible also teaches us it's better to go to the house of mourning than a house of feasting. 
Because you're going to lift somebody's spirit up. Go there talking about God. You're going to go lift somebody's spirit up. But you go to the house to feasting, more than likely you're going to go by yourself. You're not going to take God with you, and you're going to lose you. You are going to lose you. Verse 7. Therefore, you shepherds, you pastors, that's not doing what God said. Therefore, there's many times our pastor stands up here and say, I'm catching a train from here to, here to Washington. And along the way, many pastors could join. That invitation is there. Because you know what the Bible teaches us? In the last days, there's going to be one that looks like the beast that's been wounded and has been healed. That's standing in a high place. They're standing in a high place, and many are going to look toward him as if he is the savior. There are many people looking at Obama like he's a savior. Many people looking at Obama like he's going to fix the problems in this world. Many people. You know the Bible speaks about in the book of Revelation? A political beast. That's that political beast. Some of y'all over there laughing. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> the political beast. And soon there's going to come a religious beast that's going to cause those, almost going to fool God's elect. Going to cause those to, how can a man say out of this side of his mouth, he's a godly man, he's a Christian, and he have all the beliefs in, in, in God, but he don't believe in one man, one woman. He don't believe in thou shalt not kill. How can he say that? And, he's, and he says a man and a woman could get married. How can that man say he's a Christian? He come around Christians and say what Christians want to hear and get around politicians and do what politicians do. Unfaithful shepherd because God has put him in a position to lead, he is to be a shepherd, and he is an unfaithful shepherd. And I'm going to tell you somebody else that's unfaithful. Any of you pastors out there that's not telling your congregation that they need to vote is an unfaithful shepherd. Because we have no right to complain to God about what's going on in this world if we don't exercise our right to vote. And anywhere you can go and get a ballot slip and read about every candidate on there and find out what his moral standards are. Right. If he has godly standards and vote godly ways. You don't have to vote Republican, Democrat. If that man is of God, vote for him. Because now we're in a mess. Right. You got one man that don't believe in God and you got another man that thinks he's a God. Or think he's going to be a God. Or they might want to come lock me up. <laughs> but I'm going to preach in jail. They're going to throw me out of jail too. So what's the difference? <laughs> I must obey God, not man. Therefore, you shepherds, you pastors that don't tell your congregation that they need to vote and how to vote and how to keep this a Christian nation, one nation under God. Right. Not one nation above God, one nation under God. And then they say, with liberty. If you ain't under God, you don't have liberty. You're bound by sin. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, said the Lord God, surely because my flock became prey, you threw them out there for the world to grab them, for anybody to grab them. And my flock became meat to every beast of the field because there was no shepherd. 
Nobody to say this is a Christian nation and it's going to stay a Christian nation and we're going to stay under Christian values. No shepherd. Neither did my shepherd search for my flock, but the shepherds fed themselves and fed not my flock. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God. Now, you people over the Internet, if you're mad at me, you need to have a conversation with God. That shows you you ain't talking to God enough if you're mad at me. Because you know how God does. The Bible teaches you the wind blow from the north, south, east, and west. The spirit the same way. You can't tell which way the spirit going to go. What did I tell you? I came up here to teach Revelation 1. But the spirit told me teach this. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, behold, I am against the shepherds. And if God be against you, who can be for you? I will require my flock at their hand and cause them to cease from feeding. Cease, cause you to cease from feeding my flock. People are going to stop listening to you. Godly people are going to see those ungodly things that you're doing and not going to pay you a bit of attention. These things are for you to know. This is what the Bible teaches. These things are for you to know. Not wonder if this man is going to do this right or if that man is going to do that right. You have the power to make sure right gets done. Right gets done. I don't, I'm not a politician, I, but I got to do it to speak what God said. Right. Neither shall the sep- shepherds feed themselves anymore. Oh boy, God tell you that something wrong. Yeah. God say, even though you pick this Bible up, you ain't gonna even remember or understand anything that you read anymore. You ain't gonna even be able to feed yourself anymore. Because you refuse to feed my flock. For I will deliver my flock from their mouth. That they may not be meat for them anymore. Can't go around bragging about what Christians do no more. Ezekiel 34 verse 11. For thus says the Lord God, behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep. Because the Bible teaches God tries the reins of the heart. You ain't going to just say you love God and not not love God. God going to try you and find out if you love him. God will allow predicaments and certain things to happen in your life to see if you trust you or him. God will search you. I will search my sheep and seek them out. As a shepherd seek out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all the places where they have been scattered. Where they have been scattered when they were walking through the valley of the shadow of death. When they were surrounded by darkness and by sin, God said, I'll seek you out anyway. If you do not have Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, when the pastor gives an invitation, the altars are open. The altars are open. God says, I will bring them out. I will bring them out from the people. From the people. You see, we're all God's creation, but we're not all God's creatures. Some of us belong to Satan. Remember, we were born sinners. Even though you were created by God, you were born sinners. So we were creatures from the very beginning, but we were sinful creatures by nature. But if you do not have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, You are still that evil creature. That evil creature. 
I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land, that land called salvation. And feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places. I will feed them in good pasture and upon high mountains of Israel shall their fold be. There they shall lie in good fold in a fat pasture and in a fat pasture shall they feed upon the mountains of Israel amongst God's people. I pray God has blessed you. I pray he open your eyes to some things will help you grow in your relationship with him. Not only you, but also those unfaithful shepherds. I pray God opened their eyes and gave so they can. You know, there's a lot of pastors that, that preach the word of God that are not saved. A lot of pastors preach the word of God and are not saved. They just want a job. <laughs> They just want a job so they don't have to work and file taxes. They ain't saved if they're not preaching the whole word of God. Because the word of God hurts. And they only want to feel things, preach things that feel good. What did I just say? The sword. This time, the sword fell on them. God bless you. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for our shepherd tonight sharing the word of God with us. I want to ask our ushers to come forward at this time, and we're going to give you an opportunity to give to this ministry called the First Southern Baptist Church of Buena Park. Whatever you give, you give as unto the Lord. These men are going to come and pass the offering plates. And as they do, may the Lord bless you as you give. I believe we're going to have someone sing or play during the offering. Do we have? Okay, come right on up. And after we do our offering, we're also going to talk to you about uh, a separate giving, and that is this blue box that you saw Brenda just come up and put a buck in. There's a group of people down in Branson, Missouri, that's building a cross, a big 200-foot cross with a 100-foot arm on it. And I want to be a part of it, and we want to give you a chance to be a part of it. So if you'd like to put something in that box, you're welcome to do so as you leave tonight. This offering is for the meeting and for the church. The offering in the blue box is for the Branson Cross. So go ahead and share some music with us, please.
Thank you, Mr. Kim. God bless you. And I believe we left one letter out of his name there. I apologize for that. It's T-A-I-E-L, Kim. Thank you so much for blessing us. And let us all be reminded that we need to be still and know God. And I would not be the good shepherd to this flock if I were not to say to you tonight, before you leave here, I want to give you an opportunity. You may be here tonight and you believe in God and about God, but you've never come to know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And I'm going to give you that opportunity right now. I want to give a couple of words of instruction. Number one, I want our fellows to close those doors back there. When we exit after a while, we're going out this door over to the uh, dining hall. So you fellows close those doors and everybody will go out this way. Now... Would you bow your heads with me in prayer? Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around. If you're listening to my voice over television or radio or here in the sanctuary, and you would like to invite Jesus into your heart and into your life for the very first time tonight. Now, if you already have Jesus, I want you just to say, thank you, Lord. But if you've not done that and you want to do it, I want to give you that opportunity right now. So I want to ask if you... Pray this prayer with me, a very simple prayer, and I would ask you to do this. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, you would say, I believe that Jesus is God. And I believe that I cannot save myself, and I know in order to go to heaven, I must be saved. I must get right with God, and right now, I want to get right with God. I want to invite Jesus Christ to come into my heart and into my life and save me. And if you'll pray that prayer, watching on television, listening on the radio, or right here, God will save you based on the authority of God's holy word. And we thank the Lord for those. The Bible says when one person prays that prayer, there's rejoicing in heaven. And Father, we can almost hear the choir singing in heaven now because we know some have prayed to receive you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One of the things God's Word does is tell us about special days, birthdays. We have a special birthday girl. Come on down, Brenda. And if you were born in the month of September, come on down and we'll celebrate with you your birthday. This is Brenda's birthday. <laughs> so if your, bir if your birthday is in... September. We want to celebrate birthdays. We have how many? Four? All right, let's sing Happy Birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. Happy birthday to you. All right. All right. All right, they're going to receive their birthday gifts. And Brenda, as our food coordinator, just blew all of the calories out of that cake. They're all gone, and uh, we'll enjoy that over after dinner. We have one that's missing, Alan. Alan is missing. Okay, well, he's probably working. All right, they're receiving their gifts, and we praise the Lord for that. This is another part of the ministry of Sarong Community Church. They bring them gifts. You guys get your gift and go have a seat, please. Now, in just a moment, we're gonna, they're going to take the cake out and get it over to the kitchen, and we're going to 
have uh, Sarang Group come on back. They're going to come back and do one more song for us. And uh, here's what we want you to do. I want this song to be our benediction, okay? I want the song to be our benediction. What are you going to sing? Do you know yet? What, what, what's, it? what's the song? Day of Elijah. Day of Elijah. All right. As they sing this song for us, first of all, I want you to stand, and I want you to give them a hand, and Jesus a hand clap. Now, as they sing, we're going to exit, and I'll have this box right over there. And if you want to put something in there for the cross, you do as the Lord leads you. Thank you.